All right, here's the real surprise. I'm going to teach you something tonight that has potentially unlimited amounts of money that you could make. And I mean unlimited. I've never taught you something that has unlimited amounts of money you can make until tonight. <laughs> okay. I got to read this disclaimer tonight more than ever. <laughs> I have to read. <laughs> I'm not an attorney or an accountant. I am giving advice based on my experience and successes. I do not claim that anything in this presentation is legal advice, is state advice, tax advice, or good advice. <laughs> Please feel free to check with your accountant or attorney before using any of the techniques discussed in this presentation or any techniques I ever discuss with you, especially what I'm about to teach you tonight. Okay? Stock options and real estate investing have inherent risks, but nothing has as much risk as what I'm about to show you tonight. <laughs> Any claims made in this presentation aren't my results, and I'll never admit that they are, <laughs> okay? Your results may differ, okay? Results are also based on effort. This, what I'm going to show you tonight, doesn't take much effort at all, okay? I promise you that if you do nothing, you'll be better off than if you do what I'm going to teach you tonight, okay? Your chances of success will increase dramatically but they won't have anything to do with what I'm about to teach you. Okay. What I'm going to teach you tonight is how to break into your own home. If you think, I, I, I was taught this by somebody maybe 15 years ago. And I thought, yeah, 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 yeah I'll never use that. I used it so many times. <laughs> that I really think it's important to understand how to get into your own home. I'm going to teach you how to break into a house. Hopefully it's going to be your house. So let's, let's, let's talk about a couple of reasons why you would need to break into your own house. Maybe some squatters took over your property. I had a, a buddy of mine that that happened to, and uh, the house was vacant. He, he bought it. He was going to get a landlord license and do everything right. And before he could even acquire the licenses necessary, some squatters broke into the house and had like 15 different people sleeping all over his property. It took him like five months to get rid of them. And I'm not sure how much money he lost, but it was a bundle, okay? It was in the maybe $25,000 range that he lost. Just because this squatter who lived in the area the, the woman who actually, who did it to him, she lived in the area, she knew the property was vacant, and she just found a bunch of homeless people or, or drug addicts or whoever these people were. I don't know the details because I never went to the house. I had nothing to do with the deal. I just knew the story, but it took him a long time to get rid of them. Something like maybe five months, he lost about 25 grand, all right? Something like that happens to you. I mean... It's a really tough situation, and I hope it doesn't happen to you. But other scenarios that could happen is you could have tenants in the property who aren't paying you, and they change the locks. Or maybe they add a bolt lock to the inside of the door, so no matter if you have the key or not, you ain't getting in, okay? Um, also, what could happen is suppose you filed for eviction on them. Well, there's a certain point where the tenants are going to get a letter saying that the sheriff is coming to your door. And oftentimes, if anyone's ever been evicted before, and a lot of times squatters and people in bad neighborhoods have been evicted before, they're well aware that not only is the sheriff coming, but he's coming with a locksmith, okay? So these people know they got problems. And oftentimes the tenants will call the police, which is good, because that just solves, that actually helps the landlord. And what the tenants are supposed to do is have a moving van there and empty the property the day that all this happens. They know about it ahead of time. They've been notified by the city. And they should have gotten a moving van and got all of their stuff out of the house and be long gone, right? But that very rarely is the case. I mean, it depends on where your house is. The better the neighborhood, the less that this kind of thing is going to happen to you. <clears throat> so I, got a I had a quad in Mayfair. 
which I sold. Uh, it's one of the buildings I uh, wish I probably hadn't sold. Because the guy I sold it to works out at the LA Fitness Gym, and every time I look at him, I go, damn, why did I sell that building to that guy? <laughs> at the time, I needed the money, obviously. I don't even remember why at this point. This, this building was a little quad. The apartments were 430 square feet. That's a really small apartment, right? But uh, it rented like hot gigs. Because the rent, I think I was charging like 650 bucks a month in rent, and, and they were renting like, if I put an ad in a, in a Craigslist, for example, the phone would ring off the wall, and I'd have like 15 people coming down trying to rent these properties, and uh, it was a real cash cow. I wish I didn't sell it. One of the tenants wasn't paying me, <clears throat> and uh, she didn't get a U-Haul truck. She didn't call the cops. She ignored all the letters from the city, and um, the day that the sheriff showed up, uh, the sheriff basically told her, grab everything you can and get out of here. The way it works in Philly is you got 30 days to come back with the U-Haul truck, which she never came back with. And I think I ended up throwing out all of her stuff. But I'll never forget her little dog. She had one of those hot dog. What do they call them? Do Dachshunds? Okay. She had one of these little hot dog dogs, and they're walking out, and the dog was like, had his head down low, like he knew he was being evicted. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm looking at the dog, and all I'm thinking is, the dog is freaking smarter than the tenant, because she didn't do no preparation, but the dog seemed to know what the heck was going on. All right. So let's talk about breaking into a home, because you're going to probably have to do it more often than you think. So this is a, a cheap lock. I got this screenshot from the internet today. All right, this is a quick set lock, and they're very poor quality. Seventeen dollars and forty cents. I could have bought this very lock today uh, off the internet <clears throat> and had it delivered to Investor Schooling. And I would say don't buy these because they're garbage. Right? You want you want to spend like more like thirty-five, forty-five dollars on a lock if you actually care about the house. If it's a rental property, maybe you don't. I don't know. You, you get to make that decision, but these locks are not good. All right. So do not use this to commit a crime, please. This is to get into your house. And if you own a bunch of properties, I guarantee you, you're going to have to use this. What I'm going to show you how to get through, how to get into these locks. You're going to have to do this. Okay. I when I was taught it, I never thought I would use it as many times as I did. All kinds of crazy things happened. I had a guy die in my apartment, and the neighbors started complaining because of the smell of the dead body. And uh, I used this, the first time I used this was the cops, he changed the locks. The guy was a construction guy. He went and changed the locks on me, so I didn't have the keys. I had this giant spool of keys. I was... All these cops were there waiting for me to open the door. I was a little rattled. I couldn't find the damn key. I just said, to hell with it. I'm going in my car. I'll get my toolbox out. And I started doing what I'm about to show you. So these are the tools that you need if you're going to break into your house. You need a good quality drill. Obviously, uh, you don't always have extension cords outside, so you need a battery-operated drill. You need good drill bits of many sizes. Preferably new ones, uh, because older ones obviously don't work as well. You need multiple screwdrivers of various different sizes. You need a hammer, any kind of hammer will do, and maybe even a battery charger for your drill if you're having trouble. If it's a better lock than a quick set, you could be there a while. If it's a quick set, you ain't going to be there a while. You're going to have this thing open in five minutes. All right? <clears throat> so... Let's focus on the keyhole. So this is the bottom of the key where it's flat. And the top is where we have our peaks and valleys on our key. OK? And I chose this particular picture of the doorknob because there's kind of like a circular indentation where you put the key. And that's just there to help the key guide itself into the hole, all right? 
But this lock actually has a little indentation at the top of the key. And that is exactly where your drill bit is going to go. Okay? So inside of that little square that you can see at the top of the key, there's a mechanism in there. Once the key's entered and you turn it, that mechanism is directly behind that little square at the top. So you want to start with a small drill bit, something tiny, like maybe a sixteenth. You might even want to start drilling just a pilot hole. And you got to get that kind of in the right spot, right about where that square is, or where the top of that square is. And what you're going to try to do is you're going to try to just drill a little pilot with a tiny drill so that you've now picked a center point inside that box for the next drill that you're going to pull out. So you drill a little pilot hole with something tiny like a 1 16th diameter drill. And then you're going to go back into your drill bits and you're going to get a bigger drill, slightly bigger drill, and you're going to drill it a little bit more. And then you're going to do it, change the drill bit again. You don't want to break the drill bits. You don't want to push real hard on a skinny drill bit. It'll snap right off. So you sort of keep sizing up a little bigger, a little bigger, until you get to something that's maybe like an eighth inch diameter. And you're gonna, now you're going to start putting some real pressure on it. And you're going to drive that eighth inch drill bit right through. Once you get past the front plate, which usually on a quick set, it's a piece of cake. You're going to drill out the whole mechanism that the key engages with. You're going to drill it all out, okay? So now what you do, <clears throat> you're going to be able to tell that you hit the mark because you're going to heat, little scraps of metal are going to be coming out all over the place. Drill, as a drill spins, it's pulling the metal all the way out, and you're going to see it all coming out at the front of the drill, at the front of the, do of the doorknob. Now what you want to do is you're going to put your drill down. You're going to put your drill bits to the side because you're probably done with them. You're going to try to, I said you're going to bring multiple varieties of screwdrivers, right? You're going to find a screwdriver that fits into the hole that you've now made in the appropriate place. You get your hammer and you're going to tap the back of your screwdriver until it's kind of wedged in there. That's kind of what you want. You want the screwdriver to be stuck in the doorknob and it's sticking out and it's there. If you've got strong hands, you're going to grab it and you're going to start torquing it in both directions like this. With a quick set lock, you're going to have this thing open in less than two minutes at that from that point. Okay? If you think it's, it's not right, Sometimes what I might do is I might pull out the smaller screwdriver, get a bigger one, and drive that in there. I might go back to the drill bit if I feel I have to, but with a quick set, usually you don't, okay? You get a bigger one, you hammer it in, you enlarge the hole slightly if you feel you need to. Once you got that hammered in, you're going to be able to just break that whole lock right off. The whole spindle will completely turn. Just like there was a key in there and it engaged with the mechanism behind it, the whole thing will just turn. At this point, you've got the lock off already, okay? And it's going to fall right off. The, a quick set thing, you could, if you have to, you could get a hammer and you could hit it, but, but the door is a lot more expensive if it's your house, okay? We're talking about your house. We're not talking about that house you got plans for. We're talking about your house, all right? You own this house. You don't want to damage your door, okay? So at this point, you know, if you got time, you're not in a rush. You're not robbing anybody. It's your house. Take your time and get it off carefully, all right? You can get a screwdriver underneath this part right here where you can pop, see that little indentation? You can pop the plate off of it. Sometimes you can reach the screws and you can carefully take it out. But the lock itself is going to turn all the way anyway, and the door is just going to open in most cases. For a quick set lot, it's a piece of cake. You're using flatheads, totally, flatheads. Good question, I should have wrote that on there. You're using flat, all flatheads. A Phillips head, you, you should have a Phillips head with you because if you can see the screws, if you pull the cap off, 
then you can sometimes unscrew the screws and it'll fall right off. But uh, obviously, the better the lock is, the harder it is. This is the cheapest version. But guess what landlords typically do? They usually buy cheap locks, all right? Landlords don't buy $50 locks. Landlord buys the, the $17 or 40 cent locks, and they don't really work very good. And anybody, I've seen people just whack them with a hammer and get them off, but, but the problem with that is that you're going to damage the doer. And if your doer is worth $200, that's stupid. You're not going to break a, a $17 doorknob and destroy a $200 door. That's dumb, okay? So, obviously, anybody could just call a locksmith. If you own the house and you have proof that you own the house and you're not comfortable doing this, you can just call a locksmith. There are mobile locksmiths. Those guys are great. They can even make you keys, okay? So they can show up at your house. They can take your lock off safely without damaging your door. They can replace your lock, and they can make you copies of the keys, as many as you want, right at the house you're st as you're standing there. And sometimes they'll just ask you for a driver's license or anything. I had to do it here one time because uh, the, the guy next door locked the school and there was like 20 people here. And uh, so I, I called a mobile locksmith. He came right over. I took a little picture of it and sent it to Larry. He was freaking out. Oh, my God. The guy next door is like the condo manager. He already don't like Larry. And uh, <laughs> and and I'm, Larry is freaking out. Don't do that. Don't do that. I'm like, it's already done, man. We're already in the school. What are you talking about? Okay. If you really want to learn, like if you, if you have a, like a really good quality lock, go on YouTube and look for a video that has a lock that's similar to the one that you have on your door. Sometimes if people put a good quality lock on there, I got locks, <clears throat> I got these fire rated doors at Executech with these crazy locks on it. These things are really tough. I need a blowtorch to get that thing off. And I still don't think, and the door is uh, two inches thick of fire rated wood. So I don't think a blowtorch would be a good idea anyway. These doors are really expensive. So what, what I would do is if you got a really good quality lock on the door, if you want to look for a video, go through the videos. There are hundreds and hundreds of videos on, on uh, getting through certain kinds of locks. Just look for something that has similar to what you're looking at. The same strategy will work on a quick set lock. It'll work on a deadbolt, okay, like you see in this picture. It'll work on the deadbolt too. They're a little harder on a deadbolt because it's not as flimsy. It's not sticking off the door. This this much, so the deadbolts are harder. Yeah, you, you need some better drill bits. That's why I say get new ones. So you got sharp drill bits that are going to work their way through it. But anybody can do this, all right? And uh, <clears throat> I would just say, don't ever give me your address, uh, because you know, yeah. kidding, just kidding. This is it. Now, <clears throat> you're probably thinking that I'm the only guy in this room who can do this. Are you thinking that, Maria? Good. Good, because we got another guy here who knows how to do this. And he's going to come up now, and he's going to tell you how he gets into houses. Let's bring him up. Evan Zaremba. I didn't... <coughs> what, do you, what do you want me to do? You, you, you told me you broke into a lot of houses. Let's show us how you do it, man. Don't be well, shy. I did, I did do uh, what Phil suggested. I... I, a couple a couple of weeks ago, actually, I had a house that I had to sell, and the uh, realtor, 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 as they as they say, <laughs> um, locked the deadbolt on the property. And you know how in the summertime the wood swells, right? So so the deadbolt swelled on the property, so I couldn't get in the in the house. So I I drove there one night and uh, I looked up on a video on how to do this and I started drilling and this is one of these locks where it's like the original lock on the door it's probably like the door's probably 40 or 50 years old and it was probably one of those 40 or 50 and it, so it was built to last so I'm dr I'm not as good as Phil because Phil probably could have gotten there in about a minute or two but I'm drilling 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 about 45 minutes later I'm not getting that far into it so I just took a crowbar and opened up the front window and crawled in <laughs> And came out and unlocked it, and then I was able to finally change it. So that was my most recent one. Um, but several other times I've broken into houses, 
that I own um, or have under contract. And uh, that's either been through getting a locksmith or uh, or going through the front window. So if you're okay with that, I mean, here's the thing. If you got a property under contract or you own a house, sometimes you got to do things that other people aren't willing to do to get that deal done. And uh, that's, I think, one of the one of the lessons in this at the end of the day is not everybody's comfortable with drilling a lock or going through a window. Um, but if you are, you know, you, you're more likely to get it done. And I'll leave you with this one story. Yes, Jamie. I have a yeah. question yep. about the window. Yeah. So if you put a crow, what, how do you do the window? You just put the crowbar under, apply pressure. I would be afraid it would like crack the window. So I, I knew that the window, so the window had a storm window on it and it was a wood window on the inside. I knew that the wood window was already unlocked. So all I had to do was pop the storm window, which is what I should have done to begin with. So I popped the storm window. It didn't b break or damage anything. I was able just to lift up the wood window and pop right in. But if it didn't have the storm window, would you still have tried to d open it with the crowbar? If it was locked, yeah, probably, yeah. yeah. Any other questions on that? And one, other, and, and I'll leave you with this one other story. It was uh, one time I was at a house and there was an appraiser there. So this is a property that I had under contract that I was wholesaling. And there was an appraiser that needed to come to the property because I was actually doing a short sale on it. So the person had passed away uh, and it was a probate situation. Somebody had, had, the son had inherited the property and they owed too much on the mortgage. So we were negotiating short sales. So if the appraiser came out, we were going to show the bank that the property was worth less than what was owed on the property. So the appraiser came out there and I was so excited that the appraiser was there and I, the house is trashed. It was just a, a, a big dump on the inside, but I didn't see the keys and I didn't see the lockbox anywhere. And I saw the appraiser walking up and I went to open the door and I didn't see the keys and, and I knew that he was there. And I, I knew that if we needed to get this deal done because we were on a timeline. So I just threw my shoulder into the door and smashed it open. <laughs> and it worked so but that's that's really it i didn't really have anything prepared on that questions? yeah questions, Any questions for me or phil on how to break into houses that that you own <laughs> so what what happens when um the the top one is like locked like the deadbolt no the I, I guess so. Like, there's the the door, the yeah, door the door, knob, and then yeah. the one, uh, the one the above de it. the deadbolt. That's the de okay. It works too. Yeah, same thing. So same instead thing, of drill drilling, so he was showing you how to where to drill in for that. For the deadbolt, you have to drill in on on each side of it. So if, I would just if look, the best thing to do is look up on, on YouTube how to do it. The funny thing is, earlier that day, I looked up a video. It was like a two minute video on how to drill in. The guy's like, drill any deadbolt out in two in two minutes. And I thought, this would be a piece of cake. And then I get there, and the lock is 40 years old. And that was before they built all this, like, cheap stuff, like the quick set locks. And I was drilling and drilling and drilling, and I, st I just I couldn't get through. So, but it, but if it's a quick set lock, yeah, you could be in, in, in that pretty quickly. 